Hi, it's Mark out here with you today. End of December 2020. It's about 40 degrees, the wind's blowing. It's cloudy. It's been drizzling. It's just on the verge of what you would call miserable. Perfect day to go to the range. Yeah, we're out here in ammo shortages and all this stuff right now. And I, I'm doing something today that any of you watch my videos, five or six of you out there watch my videos, uh, you don't normally see me doing out at the range and, and doing in videos. I brought out today some guns I don't normally bring to the range. I brought some 22s. Okay, don't abandon ship just yet, okay? We are in a time of serious, serious ammo shortages. The ammo that is available through hundreds of online dealers uh, that is available is being sold for three and four and five times the normal prices. Uh, what a lot of people have though, what a lot of people have going into all this was they had stashes of 22s in their closets, in bags, under beds, in, in, in hutches, in cabinets out in the garage. 22 ammo lying around or in boxes and stuff that they've stuffed away and haven't shot in a long time. If you got some that's 30 years old, it'll still shoot. Let me show you a couple of the guns I brought out here today. Hold on just one second. One of the guns that I brought out, and let me make sure my camera's focusing on it right here, that is a that is a Ruger Mark I. For those of you that are enthusiasts of Ruger and of the Mark of the Mark series in general, I think they're up to Mark IV now, or maybe Mark V by now. But uh, long, long, long history of these guns right here. This model, Mark I, is the first in that line of Mark pistols from Ruger that's become so popular as uh, plinking guns, recreational guns, competition guns, and even hunting guns. Uh, this is one that uh, came from an inheritance from a family member. I uh, don't have any history on the gun as far as how it was used except that it was in real bad shape when I got it. Uh, you can see the barrel here and again I'm making sure that it's getting locked right in on the barrel there. That barrel there has all the bluing off of it. That didn't just wear off. I took, uh, I had to take 800 grit sandpaper and remove that because the barrel had been not just, not just the finish had been taken off or, or, or the finish hadn't just been, had worn off but the barrel had been eaten into all the way down by corrosion and rust. So I took all that off and I haven't done anything else to it yet. Just took the uh, corrosion off of it and actually gives it quite a bit of character. So I'm going to be shooting this gun today. You're going to see it for the first time just like I am. I have no idea if it'll even shoot. At this point I had to take out the assembly here that goes into the grip that connects to the bolt uh, because the bolt, when I got it, the bolt wouldn't go out more than a half inch. Uh, had to correct that by reassembling it. Took about an hour to get it reassembled uh, with just three parts and that's because you can't see what you're putting in. You have to sit it, you have to get it just right and put it in just the right position and ease it in and then move it to another position and then make sure a little hook is hook. I'm just telling you it was hard to get together but I do have it where it's functioning now. So we're gonna see if this gun shoots and how it shoots here in just a couple of minutes. Let me show the other gun I brought out. This is a Stevens uh, semi-automatic 22. Uh, it's an older gun. I don't know. I don't know uh, based on the serial numbers or anything. I don't know when this gun was made. Uh, all these guns that that uh, where they came from, they're all of them were at least 30 years old. Uh, this is a a heavy gun. It's a it's a long heavy gun, uh, semi-automatic. It's tube fed and the bolt has a little device on it here where you, you pull it out. The bolt's locked in place unless you pull this little peg out on the side. Then you can rack it and it feeds in from this magazine here. And uh, again, semi-auto so you can shoot it until it's out. Safety right here. Pushes forward, you're on safe, pull it back. It's off safe. We're gonna see how this gun shoots. Uh, I have had this one out shooting before. Uh, it's rated for and it's built for to shoot 22 shorts, 22 long and 22 long rifle. Uh, 22 shorts and 22 long were pretty disastrous when I took it out and tried it before. Uh, it malfunctioned with both of those with 22 long rifle. As, fa as long as I could move my finger fast, it would shoot like a machine gun uh, with no failure. So I'm I got it out here with 22 long rifle ammo. We're gonna see how this performs today. Uh, this Stevens 22 semi-automatic rifle. So those are the guns. Let's get going here and see how things work out as I, first of all, pick this pistol up, see if it'll shoot, and if it does, see how well I can get on target with it. Let's go. I was going to come out here with a, and put it on a bench rest and everything and 
bring a bag and stuff with me but considering what the weather's like uh, I just minimize what I brought it up with me I'm gonna do it like I do any other gun but with the pistol I'm gonna get right up on the target real close to it shoot it up real close and then back off gradually just to see uh, how I need to adjust uh, hopefully I can do that with uh, not being able to feel my fingers so <laughs> we'll see what happens with the uh, Ruger Mark 1 22 pistol so you know what you're looking at here here's a magazine I think it's supposed to hold 10 but I was 9 was what I was able to squeeze into it uh, the bolt is right here and the it has some cocking wings on it right here that's where you pull it out and cock it safety on the side uh, right here it's a flip up safety that also acts as a device to hold the slide or to, to hold the bolt open when you when you open it up but it doesn't it, it, it does not lock open on the last round so here we go Ruger Mark 1 nine rounds this is Browning uh, this is Browning uh, performance hollow points good ammo got several different kinds over there but I'm gonna start out with good ammo with it just to give it a good chance to get going because it's somewhat neglected and uh, need to see if it shoots <laughs> so here we go number one on the mark one close to the target few malfunctions but you can see that it's shooting just fine we'll see what happens after I run a few more magazines through it one more time at the uh, smaller target to the right there uh, again loading it up here and uh, it's obviously a fun gun to shoot and the accuracy appears to be on but I'm gonna do it one more time anyway uh, just to get a feel for it and to see if it helps any just shooting the gun some to see if it'll stop the malfunction. We'll see what happens. zero malfunctions that time let's keep going now I'm back at about 25 feet I'm gonna be shooting at the dirty I'm gonna slow down a little bit and shoot at the dirty bird target hopefully it'll keep can hopefully, hopefully it will continue not malfunctioning so we'll see what happens here Not great shooting with it but when I settled down got right in here no malfunctions 
And one more time on the dirty bird target. Function. Function. What I'm gonna do now, that's good enough for now. <laughs> what I'm gonna do now is line up on some steel over here and make some noise with it. Let's go. At this point, I'm just gonna clang that big piece of steel. It's time to have a little fun with it. I say that function pretty well. <laughs> that was so much fun, I got to do it at least one more time. <laughs> Let's go talk about this for just a minute. So the Ruger Mark I, you could probably tell I was having some fun with it and I'd love to stay out here and freeze to death and the inside of my nose numb. I still have another gun to shoot over here though. Uh, <clears throat> I'm pleasantly encouraged by what just happened there. Uh, some malfunctions and I'm really not sure about uh, whether that's in the gun frame and, and, and feed itself or if there's some issues with the magazine. The gun is approximately 43 years old hadn't been shot in decades corrosion and rust had eaten away at it there was all kinds of stuff crud caked in the bottom of it i sprayed it out with gun scrubber and scrubbed it out with brushes i haven't completely disassembled this one the way it it has to be to really get to it uh, because it requires a mallet or some kind of a hammer to get it apart so yes it really does uh, but from what i can see out here just now as far as the way it shoots uh, with my limited skill as far as accuracy with it, the function of it, uh, it's a gun that is worth looking into, opening up, completely cleaning out, bluing, and turning into a at least a range shooter, if nothing else. Uh, it's worth the time. So, the Ruger Mark I, a, the, one of the first models in the now famous line of one of Ruger's most popular 22 pistols. When I say most popular, I mean one of the most popular in the country. So uh, pleasantly encouraged by this. I hope you enjoyed watching it run its paces and uh, do what it can do for now after being manufactured 43 years ago. We'll get the other rifle here now. Shoot down range here. I'm going to get over here and get, put it on a bag rest and I'm going to shoot at that center, st I'm gonna shoot at that center steel target and uh, just see how it, it lines up and see how accurate I can be with that little yellow dot in the middle of that target down there. I'm not going to put in the time I did with this one because I've shot this one before and it, it isn't in the, in the condition this one was. But uh, having a lot of fun with 22s out here today and you can too. If you have a stash of 22, get on the range with it. Let's pull the rifle out now and see how it works. Hi, sorry for the interruption and I, I, but I didn't spend much time on the range with the rifle. Uh, just shot it one time on camera there, uh, 10 rounds through it at a metal plate with a, a round circle on it, 33 yards. Um, extraordinarily accurate, just these open sights here, but what I want to talk to you about this gun here is something that would be interesting to some of you that might be looking for something like this or may find something like this just to know it. And that is that this gun is chambered. This, Steven, this is a uh, Stevens, also uh, manufactured under the name Savage. 
This one has a serial number on it, so it was manufactured between 1968 and 1976. What's interesting about the gun is chambered in, it's chambered for 22 short, 22 long or 22 long rifle and stamped on the side of the barrel. There's a lot of stuff stamped on the side of this barrel. You have to get a flashlight and look at it just right to see it, but on the side of the barrel here, um, it tells you that it's chambered for all those, but it says 22, for, it says, uh, 22 long rifle for automatic only, uh, which means semi-automatic actually, um, because 22 short and 22 long do not have the power to really cycle this rifle. You'll have endless um, malfunctions if you try to use it on semi-auto with short or, or 22 long. 22 long rifle, it will cycle like a machine gun. As fast as you can pull it, uh, pull the trigger with your finger, the gun will fire with 22 long rifle. It does an excellent job. Even at this age, you you will see it on the on the video here in just a minute. But what's interesting is the gun can be used either as a bolt action or semi-auto for 22 shorts or 22 longs, which not, not many people use anymore. But if you do use those, you can load them in the tube just like you do the 22 long rifle and you can cycle the bolt and then push that bolt in pull the trigger and when the gun fires it won't cycle because that bolt's locked and you can use it just like a bolt action with 22 shorts or 22 longs and if you just decide you don't want it in semi-auto on 22 long rifle same thing you can use it as a bolt action rifle instead of a semi-auto interesting point about this gun and uh, something that uh, is will be of interest to anybody that may find one of these in a, in a used gun shop or a gun show. Uh, over a million and a half of them are made, so they're not scarce. Um, and you do find them. And when, you, when you find one, you'll find uh, an excellent shooter if you find it in good condition. And those features uh, are significant there. So I thought I would just stop and take the time to show you this uh, before I continued on and let you see the gun firing on the range since I didn't spend much time with it. So. Here's the gun shooting. I've got a makeshift uh, bench rest over here, which is my bag doubled up. I'm gonna be shooting the rifle at the center steel target down there. The little yellow dot in the middle. I don't have a scope on it. I got the open sights. I'm at about 33 yards here. Uh, so all I can do is I can just see the yellow dot. So I'm gonna be just putting it in that general area and uh, not gonna be shooting it slow or anything, just firing steadily uh, to see how it does. Here we go. See what it did. I'd pretty much take that rifle over any modern day rifle in any gun case right now, anytime. Uh, that's the second time, I, uh, the last time I shot that gun. Uh, the last time I shot that gun was about, I don't know, four years ago, four, four and a half years ago. Took it out to a friend's uh, property and we shot it uh, several times, put several tubes through it. This is the first time I've had it back on a range since then and just now fired it ten times at that one target and you just saw the results on the other, from the other camera there where it, where it was up close on the target. You saw what it did. Uh, and that's with me back here with my eyes just barely being able to even see that there's a yellow dot in that uh, in that steel target so the gun <laughs> you say what you want to about me the gun speaks for itself I'm not going because I'm not going to expend any more ammo out here or any more of your time you just seen that 22 uh, mark one which was really encouraging hopefully that's of interest to some of you that are uh, that are that are really interested in older guns and guns that still function and, and even taking a gun and working on it yourself uh, this one over here <laughs> I'll have it out some more just for the satisfaction of being able to do that with it at that distance with with open sights and just not even working at it so the Stevens rifle thumbs up I don't want to give that one up 
So, hope you enjoyed this today as much as I did. I'm freezing to death. I can't feel my fingers. The inside of my nose is numb. So I'm going to go down there and put my targets in my truck, load my guns up, and take off. And I'll see you again very soon in a Christian gun owner video from the range. I'm Mark Rogers. I'll see you soon.